Hey, well, there we are. I think we're live tonight on a Friday night. Um, it's been an interesting day, interesting week, hasn't it? A little bit cooler today, yesterday. Um, it seems like it seems like we jump right from summer uh, head first into fall, doesn't it? I mean, just a couple of days ago, a week ago, it was nice and hot. Uh, I say nice and hot because that's that's I like hot weather. I like the summer. And I'm not going to apologize for it. I'm not a winter person, but uh, that's okay. A lot of people are. Yeah, the fall is pretty and all that, the colors and all that. We're going to get to that. But uh, I just uh, long for a little bit more of summer. And there's nothing wrong with that. So uh, anyhow, it's just good to be back here on a Friday night. Um, it seems... Uh, that we're reaching a lot more people on a Friday night if we go Facebook Live rather than um, having it in inside on a Friday night, but that's okay. That's all right. Now um, uh, people can just log on to their computers on the Facebook Live and and uh, receive a little bit of the word. Uh, I mean, really, what else you got to do on a Friday night? Uh, I know a lot of things, but I I appreciate uh, uh, people coming on, taking time to uh, log on, to sit down. I mean, the good thing is, uh, you don't even have to sit around and watch. You could just walk around and listen, just turn the volume up a little bit and, um, you know, do the dishes or whatever you do. But um, anyhow, we're just looking forward to uh, to uh, this weekend. It's supposed to be a nice weekend, but I uh, hope you're going to uh, get out and about this weekend. But tonight, we're grateful to be here. On, um, on Facebook Live around the world, around the country. And uh, just a reminder that we are on, on Tuesday nights, um, Wednesday nights, uh, Thursday nights. We have men's Bible study at the church at 7 o'clock. Uh, so if you want to join us, men, uh, we're going through uh, Robert Morris's uh, uh, series now. And it's called Free Indeed. So it's really good. Uh, we started last night and it was really good and I uh, just look forward to um, to what he has for us uh, in the next couple of weeks but uh, but on Friday nights we're uh, here on uh, fake Facebook live and Sunday mornings at uh, 1045 usually we get on uh, come on live about 1045 somewhere around there so anyhow you can add, uh, I know there's a lot of different you know preachers you can log on to not many on a Friday night uh, not many on a on a Tuesday night, uh, some on a Wednesday night, and on a Friday morning. But uh, we hope that you're in church on a Friday morning or a, a Sunday morning. I'm sorry, and um, being amongst the fellowship of believers and uh, worshiping God. We hope you're you're in church on Friday mornings and not just uh, uh, sitting in your PJs uh, watching on Facebook Live. But anyhow, uh, we're grateful to be here. Um, Last week, I was here on Friday night, and uh, I started a, a, a series, wasn't sure, and I'm still not sure how long it's going to last, but it's a series that's called uh, Our Amazing New Heart, and um, it started oh, three weeks ago or whatever when I talked about uh, trust and how much our heart uh, has to do with how we trust people. Um, not to get on that, but I just started looking at uh, this uh, thing about our, our heart, our new heart. And um, last week, uh, we're, we've been talking out, I've been talking out of Psalm 51, where uh, David uh, cried out to God. And I uh, remember Psalm 51 was, uh, was after he was confronted with his uh, uh, sin uh, of adultery and so on with uh, Bathsheba. And um, then David went to God and cried out to God. And most people, when they go to Psalm 51 or even hear of Psalm 51, right away they, they think of all Psalm 51.10, which David says, Create in me a clean heart and renew a steadfast spirit within me. And uh, that's that's a great verse. But, but I just wanted to bring out some other things before we talk about our new heart. And uh, can I just real quick go over the three things that we touched on last week, uh, if you weren't here with us, uh, the three thing was, was, um, uh, was in Psalm, was in Psalm 51, 
but it was verses 7, 8, and 9. And can I just go over them real quick? I'll just explain just a couple things, not the whole in-depth thing of it. But verse 7, David said, Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. And we looked at that verse. We took some time to, to, to tear these verses apart last Friday night. But um, he, he said, Purge me with hyssop. And um, what he meant was completely clean me out. Purge me. When you purge something... Like when you purge the air out of something, it completely cleans out of that air. And David wanted to be um, completely cleaned out. He wanted nothing left behind that reminded him of his past. Um, but he said, purge me with hyssop. And we looked at hyssop for a couple minutes, didn't we? About what hyssop meant. And hyssop was an, her an herb that was used in the, in the, in the cleansing and purification process, maybe washing clothes or whatever. But uh, he said, purge me with hyssop. And uh, hyssop was used, uh, and it was used, and it was pounded and beating on the clothing with this hyssop to clean it. And um, isn't that what Jesus did for us? Uh, Isaiah 53, 5, Jesus was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. So Jesus took our beating for us. You know, he says, purge me with hyssop. Jesus was that hyssop. He purged us. He, he, uh, he cleansed us, amen, with his blood, and he, he took the beating at Calvary for you and I. So David, I was amazed how much these verses were prophetic in the sins. Amen. So we looked at that about hyssop and, and what that meant a little bit. And then we looked at verse 8. Verse 8. And David said, make me hear joy. Make me hear joy and gladness that the bones you have broken may rejoice. May re and broken bones are actually a metaphor for the sin, for the sin that weighs us down, the sin of Bathsheba that weighed him down. Um, it, it places sin. It places weight upon us, and um, it robs us. It robs us, doesn't it? Sin robs you from your joy and from your gladness. Uh, David's joy was gone. David's the psalmist. David his song was gone, and and David desperately wanted that back in his life, and he knew what he had to do to get that back. Didn't he? The Bible says now that he gives us uh, the oil of joy and the garment of praise. So we know that Jesus did that on the cross, that that he has placed his joy inside of us. He wraps us, the garment of praise, praise he wraps us with his praise, amen? And then he said in verse nine, hide your face from my sins and blot out my iniquities. And Jesus did that for the cross, at, at the cross. I'm just amazed that these three verses would King David cried out for Jesus fulfilled at the cross. Amen. That's good news, isn't it? That Jesus Christ fulfilled all these at the cross of Calvary for you and I. And the Bible says, he who knew no sin became sin for us. He took upon, he, he became our sins. You know, a lot of people say, wait, he took my sin upon his back at the cross. No, the Bible says Jesus became my sin. He became your sin at the cross and he gave himself freely and he gave his life for you and I. It's good news, isn't it? It's good news. He remembers our sin no more. Amen. Uh, so we looked at those three verses and then I was just going to jump into verse 10. But you know what? I think I, think I want to look at a couple other things tonight. And uh, I believe it has everything to do with why we need a new heart. Why we need a new heart. Now, if you're not, if you don't have a Bible, that's okay. You can just listen along in Psalm 51. But and just a couple of things that I want to look at before we we jump into verse 10, and this thing about our new heart, what David cried out for. But look at there's a couple of things that that um, in the Christian language that we use words 
that I think sometimes we don't totally understand what they mean. We just read over them or read through them, and we don't understand what they mean. But I think I want to look at two words here real quick, which David used, which really helps us to understand why we need a brand new heart. But in verse 1 and 3, in verse 1 and 3, uh, David said, Blot out my transgressions, and I acknowledge my transgressions. Now, we have to ask ourselves, we should ask ourselves, what is a transgression? What is a transgression? Well, a transgression is a willfully breaking of God's laws and commandments. It's a willful breaking of God's laws and commandments. Or you could say, in modern language, it's a willful breaking of the speed limit. If you go over the speed limit, which I know none of you do, you know, it's, it's a transgression. That's what transgressions mean. Um, a transgression is what we do physically. And that, that's important to understand. It's what we do physically. And uh, I was thinking, remember Bathsheba? Uh, okay, you remember the Ten Commandments? Well, David uh, broke three of the Ten Commandments. It says, uh, he says, it says, I shall not murder. I shall not commit adultery. And I shall not covet my neighbor's house or my neighbor's wife. Ouch. Well, three strikes and David was out, wasn't he? But he broke three of the commandments in, in one fell swoop, didn't he? Um, but David asked God. David asked God to blot them out. He said, I, I acknowledge them. I confess them. And now I'm asking you to blot them out. And I was reading this. Um, certain scriptures came to mind, and one of them was was First John one nine, and it says that if we confess our sins uh, as an act of repentance, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So that verse came to mind because David asked God to blot them out, and isn't that what God does if we go to God with our with our transgressions, with our sins? Amen. He, the Bible says he's faithful and just to forgive us of those sins, of those unrighteous deeds and acts that we did, those transgressions, um, those things we willfully do as an outward act. I acknowledge those things, those unrighteous acts, and ask for your forgiveness. And what does he do? What does God do? Well, he does what his word says, doesn't he? He forgives and he cleanses. And the Bible says he blots them out. He blots them out. That's what David was asking for. Um, Bathsheba, the weight of Bathsheba was always on David's mind. I can imagine that. If you've ever been in, in blatant sin, you know, and uh, the Holy Spirit is convicting you about that. You know, it's, it's, it is like a broken bone. It is like weight upon upon your chest or whatever. It's always on your mind. And David's heart was broken. David's heart was broken. He was, his, his was, was one of true repentance. Now you might say, and you might ask a, a, a right question, was David repentant because he got caught? Or was David repentant because he knew he broke God's heart? And the answer is yes. The answer is both. The answer is he got caught he knew he was caught. The prophet uh, read his cards, but he knew then that he broke God's heart, and he had to go get right things right with God. Amen. That's what you and I need to do. Listen to verse 13 in Psalm 51. It says, the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. These, O God, you will not despise. So David had these, didn't he? He had a, a, a broken spirit. And he had a, a contrite or, or crushed or bruised. That's what contrite means. It means to be crushed. It means to be under a weight. And that's what David was. Uh, so David repented. Just like we do. Just like we did when we got saved. Or we fall into sin or, or whatever. Addiction or whatever. We go to God. And we repent from a heart of... of, of um, uh, repentance, a heart of, of contriteness 
to God because God sees and knows our hearts. Amen. And uh, we, we repent to God. But a couple of things, godly repentance produces life. Amen. When we go to God and we repent of something, God gives us life in return. But worldly repentance uh, produces death. And we can look at that in the scriptures. But worldly repentance is what? Oh, I'm sorry. And then that's it. But godly repentance is from the heart, not just something that, that rolls off our tongue. It, it's godly repentance. Godly repentance restores, amen? Godly repentance restores, but worldly repentance covers up. Worldly repentance covers up. See, God knows. God knows our heart. He knows if we're truly repentant or not. And um, and he, 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 he gives forgiveness according to to our hearts, according to our heart. Um, David, King David, didn't want to cover up. Um, he tried that, didn't he? He tried that. If we go back and read the story, he, he tried that. David tried covering up, but David didn't want to cover up anymore. He wanted restoration. He wanted restoration with the God that he knew that he transgressed against. Amen. And that's what he says uh, another Right in Psalm 51, he says, it's you, it's you I've sinned against. So David knew that his sin was against God. Not only against everybody else, but it was against God. And David didn't want to cover up anymore. He wanted uh, restoration. David got it, and we can get it too, amen? We can get the same thing that David got, the restoration, amen? So in verse 2, so we look at, at transgressions. Most people don't know what a transgression is, and now we do. But in verse 2, um, David said, Wash me thoroughly from my iniquities. Now, this is a word that, that I, I just always used to read over and read through and not wonder about or worry about. Or, but what, what is an iniquity? What is an iniquity? Iniquity is what's hidden in us. An iniquity is what's hidden in us. And the best, uh, best thing I, I've read is, is uh, like if you get a bruise and um, the blood pools underneath your skin. Uh, you can see it, the bruise. It's there, but, it, 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 but it's not outside. Um, so it's, it's in us. Iniquities are hidden in us and usually in our hearts. Amen. We were born in iniquity. Um, it's our thoughts, if you will, it, it's our thoughts of transgressing. It's our thoughts of transgressing, but hidden inside of us. And usually what we think about most of the time uh, comes out of us, either through our actions or through our words. Uh, a lot of times we transgress by our words, don't we? Not only our physical actions, but by our words. Um, so, uh, like like anger, or or fear, or lust. Amen. That's that's like lust. Uh, remember when when uh, if we go back and read the story in Samuel, where David uh, uh, didn't go out to fight like the other kings, uh, but he stayed back and he was on his roof and he looked out and he saw Bathsheba. On her roof. Now, obviously, obviously, he lusted after her before he asked questions about her, because he knew what the Ten Commandments said. He knew what, but but iniquity was was formed in his him that that time, and uh, he 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 requested Bathsheba. Another way you can look at iniquity is is like having a guilty conscience for something. That's the iniquity in your in your heart, in your mind, uh, things you you thought about that were wrong, and um, I was thinking about I was looking at uh, Hebrews ten twenty two. Listen to what it says. Hebrews ten twenty two says, "Let us draw near with a true heart, in full assurance of faith, having your heart sprinkled from what an evil conscience, and our bodies washed with pure water." So that's what God does for us. If you read through Hebrews, he, he cleanses our, our guilty conscience. You know, it says in Hebrews that, that the priest had to constantly make sacrifices uh, every year. 
uh, because of, of sin, but of our of guilty conscience. And that's what Jesus' blood does. Jesus washes away our guilty conscience. He washes away the sin of iniquity. Um, listen to what Isaiah 59, 2 says. Listen to this. It says, your iniquities have separated you from God. Now, he could have said your transgressions. He could have said your sins or your actions. But he said, your iniquities have separated you from God and your sins have hidden his face from you. Ouch. So our iniquities separate us from God. Separate us from God. Uh, Jesus washes us, the Bible says in Hebrews, with pure water. Amen. So we, David says, uh, wash me thoroughly from my iniquities. Amen. Uh, and all these, all these we talked about is why we need a new heart. All these we talked about last week and we started out with tonight is why we need a new heart. Our new life in Christ cannot be lived out of our old, sin-filled, iniquity-filled hearts. Uh, we need a new heart. And thankfully, God's given us that. Thankfully, God's given us that. Um, look what David asked for. And it's the same thing. God gave David, God gives to us. Psalm 51, verse 10. We all know it. We've all heard probably sermons on it or whatever. But David cried out to God, created me a new heart, a clean heart, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Now, we're not just going to jump into that, obviously, without looking what some of these words mean. But uh, the word create he says, create in me a new heart. He didn't just say, well, just give me something. And he said, create. And he, he used the word bara, the he were, Hebrew word bara, B-A-R-A. -A, and it means to make something brand new out of something out of form. To make something brand new out of something that didn't have a form before. Um, uh, it's like the, the perfect example is what? Is a lump of clay. You know, a lump of clay can be can be turned into anything, pottery um, or a human figure, a statue, whatever. You know, a, a clay can be can be turned into something useful, productive, new. Amen. As we've as it's formed and with our hands and with water and all that on the wheel. But um, it's like it's like a lump of clay. Uh, listen to Genesis 1 1. You probably know the scripture. But God, the second word is in Genesis 1, 1, God created the heavens and the earth. He, he, he formed something that didn't have form before. Genesis 1, 28 said, God created man in his own image. So here we see that God created something. Remember it says out of the, out of the, out of the dust of the earth that God created man. Adam or Adam um, and created something brand new out of something that didn't have form before. Now I'm going somewhere with this, so, so just hang in there. Uh, David didn't use another Hebrew word that meant, just, just basically means, uh, the word means for a statue or something of an idol. You know, he didn't use that word. He used the word bara. Where God, where God made something new out of something that didn't have a form before. Uh, this isn't the exact Hebrew wording, but that's, that's uh, my paraphrase of it. That God created something, created man. Look what he did with uh, Eve. He, he created Eve out of what? David's rib. Did Eve look like David's rib? I kind of doubt it. But... Uh, but he created Eve out of David's rib. Something that resembles God inside and out is what, Dave, is what God created. Uh, and inside of, of Adam, inside of Adam, we are, were created all the qualities and characteristics of God. Because doesn't it say that, that 
God created him in his image. Now, we're created in God's image. Do we look like God? Well, it all depends who you talk to. A lot of people think they're God. Uh, under Jesse Duplana says, you know what God looks like? He says, look at me. He says, I look like God. But I think realistically, God created us in his image and formed us inside to look like him. I really do. Uh, all his characteristics, all his qualities uh, that, that he placed in Adam were, were, were God's qualities, his characteristics, his image, what he looked like on the inside uh, with, with reason, with intellect. Um, think about it. David, uh, David named all the animals and all the birds. Amen. So he had to have some kind of uh, pretty intelligent uh, thinking and inside of him to do all this, that God would give him um, the freeness to, to name all the animals. So, so God created Adam, man, in his image. And in order for him to have somebody to fellowship with, to walk in the cool of the garden with. And think about it. God gave Adam and Eve um, ownership of the world. Really, didn't he say, uh, be productive and uh, take care of the garden and, and all this other stuff? So, so David had to have some kind of intelligence and foreknowledge of what to do in gardening and with animals and all this other stuff. So David, God created Adam in his own image and he creates us in his own image as well. Um, and that's the way it was until Adam and Eve fell. One of the things that God gave Adam and Eve was a freedom of choice, was free will. But God knew, didn't he? God knew that Adam and Eve, it wasn't a surprise when God walked in the cool of the day and cried out to Adam, 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 where are you? Uh, and it just blows your mind, doesn't it? Because it's like, well, Doug, God, he's hiding. You know, that's just God didn't know. Amen. Like us, we try to hide things from God and, and uh, we think we're getting away with it. But, but God knows, doesn't he? God knows. But anyhow, um, God created, well, I'm trying to get the point. God created something new out of something out of form. And back to David, God, David said, create in me a new heart. In other words, form something in me that wasn't there before that needs to be new, that needs to uh, be filled with everything that you are. Create that in me, God. So David knew what the word create meant, and he cried out to God, uh, take this heart that's filled with iniquity and hardened by transgression, blot them out, create in me, in something inside of me that, that is brand new, that something that will follow your heart, that resembles your heart. Um, God, I want your heart, uh, a heart that will want what you want, a heart that, that will want to please you. Uh, after you're done with my own heart, uh, I won't look the same. I won't talk the same. I won't act the same. And really, that's what God does for us. After we're born, when we get born again, God creates in us a new heart. He takes out the old stony heart. We looked at that a couple weeks ago and places in us a heart of flesh that we can have the, that we can have the heart of God in our lives. We can, we can pursue God with a heart that, that is after God, just not something we do because we want to do it. No, it's because God's heart now lives inside of us. We have the heart of God. Um, I heard somebody say that when a person gets a heart transplant, a physical heart transplant, they, they take on some of the qualities and characteristics of the heart donor. And I think we're going to find that that's what God has done for us, um, that what God has given us and created in us is a heart that's filled with with his love, with his passion, with his desires, and uh, especially God's love. You know, the Bible says in Romans 5, 
5, that the love of God has been shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. So God, just to, we're not going to go much farther tonight, but, but God has created something in you and I that will allow us, that will cause us, that will help us to go after God's desires for us. Go after God's will for us and accept it. You know, because we now have the same heart, we accept what God has for us. We accept God's plan for us. We accept God's love for us because it's, it's in us. He has placed his love in our heart. And when David said, when David said, create in me a clean heart, that's exactly what happened when we asked Jesus Christ to come into our lives. When we accepted the plan of salvation, when we accepted the forgiveness of our sins, the Bible says he places in us his heart. He created that for us. His desire was that we would have his heart so we would do what he wants us to do. And that's part of the plan, isn't it? That's part of God's plan. He doesn't force it on us. He doesn't ram it down our throats. He just uh, he just set, simply says, uh, all who come to me, I will not cast you out. Amen. He's, he's waiting with open arms. David said, create in me a new heart, a clean heart. That's what God did. And that's what he does for us. Next week, we're going to look a little bit and how to, how do we walk in this new heart? Because really, Really, with me, I had no idea what to do. You know, I had no idea what, what this meant. I had no idea how to walk in this new life in Christ. But I knew, and I've said this before, and I'm going to say it again. I knew that that, that after the Sunday afternoon in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, that if I didn't stand to receive Christ as my Savior, I felt physically like my heart was going to explode. I don't know how to explain that. I don't know if that has happened to you or anybody else, but I know it happened to me. You know, I can testify to that, that, that God himself did a heart transplant in my life that day. I know he did. I know he did. And I, I pray, I pray I'm not the same person that I was before. Have I been perfect? Have I done things that, that probably break God's heart? Not that we... Not that we can break God's heart. And I don't think there's anything that surprises God. But there's things that I've done. I transgressed. You know, I uh, do, a, do iniquity still come into your life? They sure they do. Sure they do. There, there's a way to, to, um, to, to get by them, though. There's a way to do away with them. And maybe we'll look at that next week. Uh, what about the iniquity that wants to come into our life today? Because nobody's perfect. Amen. We have an adversary, the devil, goes around looking to whom he may devour. You know, he, he has these fiery darts that he throws at us all the time throughout the day and night. And so we have to guard our heart. What, what's so important? And how do we, how do we guard our heart? He didn't say, God, guard, guard this new heart. No, the, the psalmist says, you guard your own heart. For out of it, the Bible says, for out of it flow the what? The issues of life. So God's life is in us, trying to come out of us. And we have to guard what comes out of our heart. And how how does it get in there in the first place? Well, we looked at that uh, several weeks ago. But we're just going to touch on that next week. But uh, for some of you that, that didn't hear. But... Um, you know, all these things we talked about, God says, Clen David says, cleanse me, blot out my transgressions. Uh, he confessed his iniquities before God and God forgave him. And what a prophetic insight. David cried out to God. What a prophetic insight into what God did for David and God through Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary did for us. David, or God loves us so much, doesn't he? That he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever, you and I are whosoever, aren't we? 
We're all the same. We're all in the same basket. You may think you're better than somebody else, but we're all in the same basket. We're all the eggs in the same carton, aren't we? That whosoever should believe in him should never perish. That should never perish, but should have what? Eternal life. That word perish means to be separated. Listen, if you die tonight and you're outside of Christ, you're going to be separated from God for eternity. But only in Christ, only in Christ can we have eternal life. Listen, you don't want to die tonight. Not to put guilt or condemnation on anybody, but you don't want to die tonight outside of Christ. You don't want to die tonight in your sins with a heart filled with iniquity. For you will be separated. You will perish. And be totally separated for eternity from God. Listen, I don't want that for you. And I don't think any of us watching tonight or listening want that for their, even their worst neighbor. Somebody they, they dislike. Or hate. You do not want them to go to hell for eternity. You want them to spend eternity in heaven. Think of it this way. Think of it this way. What if the person in, in, in your life that you dislike, that you might have ought against, what if they would get born again and God would change their heart and they would become your best friend? Yay, think of that. Well, sometimes that's hard to, to visualize. But, uh, but uh, listen, God loves you. He wants you to have his heart because he fills it with himself. Every quality, every characteristic that God has, God fills that heart and places inside of you. And his love is the central theme of God's heart. He places that love inside of us. He gives us the ability that we don't have to love the unlovely, to love those that despitefully use us. Isn't that, the, isn't that what the Bible says? To love those? Amen. So anyhow, that's in our heart. If you're a Christian tonight, that's in your heart, whether you knew it or not. Now it's, it's your responsibility, it's your privilege to learn how to live out of your new heart that God created in you. Amen. That's good news. That's exciting. And next week, we're going to look at more about our new heart. How do we live out of our new heart? How do we learn how do we learn? How did I learn what was in this new heart that I can live out of it? Live out of my new heart. You can too, whether you know it or not. And you will know it if you if you follow along long enough. And uh, we're going to look into that. And uh, we'll just be excited about what God has done for us. Amen. Amen. Have a great night. Have a great weekend. Hopefully see you Sunday morning in church, uh, 10 o'clock. Uh, Elijah's Home and Ministries. Uh, we're going to be looking at the Word of God. We're a Spirit-filled church led by the Word of the Living God. Amen. So be blessed and have a great weekend in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.